Hello my dear friends, we are resuming MCQs from day 25 and uh, without wasting time we will begin with question number 1. Question number 1 is asking whether Milton was a royalist or not. Option A, is it true? Option B, it's false. So your answer is it's a false statement. Milton was not a royalist. Let's see the highlighters. Although Milton enjoyed the company of some aristocrats and his brother Christopher fought on the royalist side, he was allied with the Puritan cause. He went as far as writing defenses of the execution of Charles I and the few and sorry and the new republic he also served as latin secretary to the commonwealth government from 1649 to 1653 and to oliver cromwell's protectorate between the year 1654 to 1658 let's move to next question what is the name of the great epic about the battle between god and saturn and the history of man that is considered to be Milton's absolute masterpiece. Your options are Paradise Lost, Option B Paradise Regained, Option C Adam and Eve and Option D Ode. So here your correct answer is Option A Paradise Lost. Let's move to question number three. What are the sorry what was the name of Milton's first wife whom he married in 1641 and who left him a few months after the marriage and returned to him in 1645 but died in childbirth in 1652. Your options are Emily Selwood, option B Mary Powell, option C Mary Alwood and option D Mary Child. Here correct option is Mary Powell. Highlighter says, Catherine Woodcock was Milton's second wife, Anna Hathaway was Shakespeare's spouse and Emily Selwood was married to Alfred Lord Tennyson. Question number four, how old was Milton when he wrote On the Morning of Christ's Nativity? Option A, 32. Option B, 21. Option C, 22 and option D, 23. Your correct option is option B, 21. The ode was written on Christmas 1629, a few weeks after Milton's 71st birthday. Let's move to question number 5. Which of the following works was not written by John Milton. Option A, La Allegro. Option B, Absalom and Acritophel. Option C, Ruth. And option D, Christabel. Your correct option is option B, Absalom and Acritophel. Highlighter says, Absalom and Acritophel. Akitophel was written by John Dryden. In 1634, Milton wrote a mask. What is the name of the mask? Option A, Comus. Option B, Amos. Option C, Mask. And Option D, Queen. Here, your option A is correct, that is Comus. Let's see the highlighters. Both Lycidas and Penseroso were written by Milton, but they were poems, not masks. The Mask of Blackness was written by Ben Jonson. A mask is an elaborate court entertainment that combines poetic drama, music, song, dance and splendid costumes and settings. It was very popular at court in the 17th century. Question number 7. What kind of work was Ario 
pejitika option a a poem option b a tract option c a novel and option d a play here your correct option is option b a tract highlighter says Eropegitia tica is most literary, most literary of Milton's tracts. It sets forth a trenchant defense of intellectual liberty. His target is the press ordinance of June 14, 1643. Parliament's attempt to crack down on the flood of pamphlets that poured forth from both from legal and from underground presses as the civil war raged. Question number 8. Can you fill in the missing word from the famous opening line of Paradise Lost? Of man's dash and the fruit of that forbidden tree. Here, your option A is disobedience. Of man's first disobedience and the fruit of that forbidden tree. Is this correct? Or of man's first obedience and the fruit of that forbidden tree? Option C, both disobedience and obedience. And option D, none of these. So here, your correct answer is option A, that is disobedience. Question number 9. Paradise Lost tells the story of Adam and Eve. The poem is divided in 12 books. In what book does Eve finally eat the apple that brought death into the world and all our woe? Option A7, Option B8, Option C9 and Option D6. So here correct answer is Option C9. Let's see the highlighters. In Book 9, lines 780 to 784, we can read, So saying, her rash hand in evil hour, forth reaching to the fruit, she plucked, she eat. Earth felt the wound, and all her works gave sign of woe. That's all was lost. That all was lost. Question number 10. Book 1 of Paradise Lost presents Saturn with his angels fallen into hell. When Recovered, Saturn awakens all his legions and speaks to him, speaks to them. The first he addresses is described as one next to himself in power and next in crime. Long after known in Palestine, what is the name of this fallen angel? Option A. Moloch. Option B. Belzebub. Option C, lost and option D, regained. Here, your correct answer is Belzebub. Let's see the highlighters. Belzebub or Baal is called the princess of devils in Matthew. As with the other fallen angels, he, angelic name, his angelic name has been obliterated and he is now called by the name of he will bear as a pagan deity. Question number 11. This poet joined Milton at Milton's request in the post of Latin secretary to Cromwell's court of state and helped his friend Milton avoid execution for his revolutionary polemics and helped negotiate Milton's release from a belief Brief imprisonment. He also wrote a brilliant poem of criticism and interpretation on Milton's Paradise Lost that was used as preface to the second edition. Who was this poet? Option A. Richard Crashaw. Option B. Andrew Marvel. Option C. Arnold. And Option D. Comus. Here, your answer is Andrew Marvel. Let's see the highlighters. Andrew Marvel was a great poet in his own right. Not just a friend of John Milton. In question number 12, in 
In 1652, Milton became an invalid. Did he become blind or deaf? Option A, blind. Option B, deaf. Option C, both A and B. Option D, none of these. Here, he went blind, which is in option A. In 1652, Milton became blind. He became invalid because he was entirely dependent on friends to transcribe his dictation. Let's move to question number 13. At the end of his life, Milton wrote a follow-up to Paradise Lost, a brief epic in four books that treats Jesus' temptation in the wilderness. What is the name of the follow-up? Option A, Paradise Regained. Option B, Paradise Lost. Option C, Comus. And Option D, Ruth. Here, Paradise Regained is the last work of Milton. Highlighter says it is a poem by John Milton and it was published in the year 1671. Question number 14. How many women did John Milton marry? Option A, 1. Option B, 2. Option 3. Option C, 3. Option D, 5. Here your correct answer is 3. Highlighter says Mary Powell was his wife from 1641 to 1652. Catherine Woodcock was his wife from 1656 to 1658. And in 1663, he married Elizabeth Minshew who, survi who survived him. Question number 15. In Paradise Lost, which, which angel is ordered by God to drive Adam and Eve out of paradise. Before he does so, he shows Adam a number of visions about the future of a human race, beginning with Cain murdering Abel and ending with the redemption of mankind through Christ, who is this angel that has a large role in the finishing chapters of Paradise Lost. Your options are Option A, Abdiel, Option B, Michael, Option C, Nickel, and Option D, Nokalas. Here your options, Option B is correct, that is Michael. Question number 16. In which city was Milton born in 1608? Option A, York, Option B, Norwich, Option C, Canterbury, Option D, London. So here its answer is option D, that is London. Let's see the highlighters. Traditionally, a Cockney, that is a true Londoner, has to be born within the sound of bow bells. And you can't get much closer to the bells of St. Mary Lebo Church than Bread Street, where Milton was born. Question number 17. Which school did Milton attend? Option A. Westminster. Option B. Merchant Tailors. Option C. St. Paul's. Option D. St. Paul's. Option C. Option D. Christ's Hospital. Your correct answer is St. Paul's. He went to St. Paul's school. Let's see the highlighters. St. Paul's School was founded by Dean Collett in 1509 to provide fee, free education for 153 boys. 153 was the number of miraculous draught of fishes in John 21 by 11. Like many such old schools, it is today an expensive private school and is situated at Barnes in southwest London. Question number 18. Milton continued his studies at Cambridge. Which college of the university did he attend? Option A. Christ's. Option B. Magdalene. Option 
C. Peter House and option D. Kings. Highlighter says his looks earned him the nickname the Lady of Crisps. The Lady of Christ's. Question number 19. Milton's mask Comus celebrated the first Earl of Bridgewater, Bridgewater's entry into his duties as London President of the Council of Wales. It was performed in 1634 at the Lord President's official residence. Where was this? Option A. Berkeley Castle. Option B. Carnair Four Castle. And option C. Ludlow Castle. Option D. Harledge Castle. Your correct option is option C. That is Ludlow Castle. Ludlow Castle, standing on cliffs overlooking the town's two rivers, was begun in the reign of William the Conqueror and became the seat of Lords of Marches in 1475. It was partly dismantled by Parliament after civil war. After the civil war, the ruins are open to the public. Question number twenty: Edward King, a minor poet and a contemporary of Milton's at Cambridge was drowned at sea in 1637. Milton wrote an elegy for him. What was the title of the poem? Option A. Lycidas. Option B. Paradise Lost. Option C. Paradise Regained. And Option D. Ruth. It is none other than Lycidas. Milton's poem was one of a collection of 36 some in English, some in Latin and a few in Greek, which was published in Morning King's Death. It's probably the only one that is read today. It may be worthwhile to mention that the last line is Tomorrow to fresh woods and pastures new for flesh fields. Question number 21. In 1638 and 1639, Milton travelled abroad in which country did he spend most of the most of the time option a italy option b spain option c france and option d germany your correct answer is italy he is generally thought to have met galileo but this is not certain question number 22 milton's Areopagitica, published in 1644, is one of the greatest polemic in the English language. What does it attack? Option A. The Divine Right of Kings. Option B. Censorship of the Press. Option C. Taxation without Representation. And Option D. Roman Catholicism. Here your option B is correct, that is censorship of the press. Let's see the highlighters. Censorship in the form of licensing of books before publication had been exercised by the Court of Star Chamber until that court was abolished by Parliament in 1641. Following a flood of pamphlet, Parliament reimposed licensing by an ordinance in 1643. One of Milton's most famous poems, written in the early 1650s, is a sonnet ending with the line, They also serve who only stand and wait. What is the subject of the poem? Option A. His blindness. Option B. Church government. Option C. The execution of King Charles I. Option D. Cromwell's dissolution of Parliament. Here, correct option is option A, that is his blindness. His blindness is the topic or the subject of the poem. 
Milton's eyesight had always been weak and it deteriorated rapidly from his mid-thirties onwards. By 1652, he was completely blind. Blind. Question number 24. A child font St. Giles in Buckinghamshire. You can visit Milton's cottage where the poet lived from 1665 to 1666. Why did he move out of London at this time? Option A, due to arrest for debt. Option B, to escape from the plague. Option C, to avoid arrest for anti-royalist writings. And option D, to care for a sick relative. Here, option 2, option B, that is to escape from the plague is the correct answer. Milton lived in about a dozen houses during his life, but... This is the only one that is still standing. Question number 25. Whose fault will it be if Saturn sends Adam and Eve to hell? According to book 4. Option A. Gabriel's. Option B. Eve's. Option C. Adam's. And option D. God's. So here, option D is correct. That is, it is God's fault if Saturn sends Adam and Eve. To hell. Friends, by this we have completed day 25's MCQs. We will move towards MCQ 26, day 26. So if you require anything in between, just drop us a message. We will try to provide you as soon as possible. Thank you and all the best. Hello friends, let's continue with day 26 MCQs. But before that, I would request you all to revise all the 25 MCQs videos which we have uploaded till now. Because if you will keep on piling up work, then it is going to be troublesome for you only. Therefore, start practicing every day. If you keep on revising, then it will never be, it will never erase from your mind. Therefore, please keep continuing I keep revising the things that we are doing in this channel. Let's move to question number one. Who said America is my country and Paris is my hometown? Option A. Samuel Beckett. Option B. Adrienne Rich. Option C. Gertrude Stein. Option D. Ernest Hemingway. Here, Gertrude Stein said, that America is my country and Paris is my hometown. Let's see the highlighters. Gertrude Stein was an American novelist, poet, playwright and art collector. She was born on 3rd February 1874. Birthplace was Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania in the Allegheny West neighborhood raised in Oakland, California and died on 27th July 1946 at the age of 72 at neuilly sur seine France. Question number two. Eureka by Edgar Allan Poe is a novel, play, prose poem or none of these. Here, your correct answer, it is a prose poem. Let's go through the highlighters. Eureka that was published in 1848 is a lengthy non-fiction work by American author Edgar Allan Poe. Edgar Allan Poe from 1809 and 1849 he survived. Titled a prose, it is a prose poem. It has also it has also been subtitled as an essay on the material and spiritual universe. It is dedicated to the German naturalist and explorer Alexander von Humboldt between the year 1769 to 1859. It was published in March 1848 by Willey. 
क्वेश्चन नंबर थ्री विच ऑफ द फॉलोइंग इज नॉट अ वर्क बाय हेनरी जेम्स ऑप्शन ए द गुड सोल्जर ऑप्शन बी द अमेरिकन ऑप्शन सी द विंग्स ऑफ द डोव एंड ऑप्शन डी द एम्बेसडर्स क्यों योर ऑप्शन ए इज करेक्ट दैट इज द गुड सोल्जर द गुड सोल्जर अ टेल ऑफ पैशन इज अ नाइनटीन हंड्रेड एंड फिफ्टीन नोवेल बाय द ब्रिटिश राइटर फॉर फॉर्ड मैडॉक्स फॉर्ड It's set just before World War One and chronicles the tragedy of Edward Ars Burham, the soldier to whom the title refers, and his seemingly perfect marriage, along with that of his two American friends. The novel is told using a series of flashbacks in non-chronological order. The novels. original title was the saddest story the publishers asked ford ford for a new title ford suggested the good soldier and the name struck the good soldier is narrated by the character john dowell the novel opens with the famous line this is the saddest story i have ever heard question number 4 who coined the term imagim option a charles baudelaire option b immanuel kant option c ezra pound and option d t s eliot the answer is option c that is ezra pound she coined the term imagim let's see the highlighters ezra weston lomis pound was born on 30th october 1885 and died on 1st november 1972 he was an expatriate american poet and critic a major figure in the early modernist poetry movement and a fascist collaborator in italy during world war 2 his works include reposts in the year 1912 it was published hug selwyn moblery in the year 1920 and the unfinished 120 section 80 pages epic poem of poem the cantos pound's contribution to poetry began with his role in developing imagism a movement derived from classical chinese and japanese poetry stressing precision precision and economy of knowledge Question number five: The Colossus is a confessional poetry by option A Robert Lowell, option B Anne Sexton, option C Sylvia Plath, and option D Adrian Rich. Here, option C is correct. That is, the Colossus is written by Sylvia Plath. Sylvia Plath was an American poet. novelist and short story writer she is credited with advancing the journal of confessional poetry and is best known for two of her published connections collections sorry the colossus and other poems and ariel she was born on october 27 1932 boston massachusetts us and died on february 11 1963 aged 30 london england Her pen name was Victoria Lucas and spouse was Ted Hugs. Question number 6 Charles Dodson wrote under the pen name option A Mark Twain option B O Henry option C Saki and option D is Lewis Carroll Here your correct answer is Lewis Carroll Let's see the highlighters. Charles Ludwig Dodson, better known for by his pen name Lewis Carroll, he was an American sorry he was an English writer of children's fiction, notably Alice Adventures in Wonderland and its sequel Through Its Through the Looking Glass. He was born on twenty seventh January eighteen thirty two at Dersbury. Cheshire 
England. He died on 7, 14th January 1898 at the age of 65 at Guildford, Surrey, England. Question number 7. Buck is the protagonist of a novel written by the American novelist. Option A. F. Scott Fitzgerald. Option B. Jack London. Option C. J. D. Salinger. And option D. John Steebeck. Steenbeck. Here, correct answer is Jack London. John Griffith London was an American novelist, journalist, and social activist. Born on January 12, 1876, San Francisco, California, United States. He died on November 22, 1916, at the age of 40, at Glen Allen, California, U.S. Buck character occurs in The Call of the Wild. The Call of the Wild is a short adventure novel published in 1903 and set in Yukon, Canada. The main characters of the novel is a dog named Buck. Question number 8. The Adding Machine, which was published in the year 1923, is the first American Expressionist play. Was This was written by Eugene O'Neill, Arthur Miller, Clifford Odets, and option D, Elmer Rice. Here, your option D is correct, that is Elmer Rice. Elmer Rice was an American playwright, born on 28th September 1892 at New York City, United States, died on May 8, 1967 at the age of 74 at South Southampton, Southampton, Hampshire, England. He is best known for his plays The Adding Machine in the year 1923 and his Pulitzer Prize winning drama of New York. Tenement Life, Street Scene in the year 1929. The Adding Machine is a 1923 play by Alma Rice. It has been called a landmark of American Expressionism, reflecting the growing interest in this highly subjective and non-realistic form of modern drama. The poem was an influence on the Tennessee William Play stairs to the roof. Option, sorry, question number nine. Daddy is a confectional poem by option A. Emily Dickinson, option B. Dylan Thomas, option C. Sylvia Plath, and option D. T. S. Eliot. Here, Daddy, it is a confessional poem which is written by Sylvia Plath. Let's see the highlighters. Sylvia Plath was an American poet, novelist, and short story writer. She is credited with advancing the genre of confessional poetry and is the best known for two of her published collection, The Colossus and Other Poems and Ariel. She was born on 27th October 1932 at Boston, Massachusetts, United States and died on 11th of February 1963 at the age of 30 in London, England. Her, her pen name was Victoria Lucas. Victoria Lucas and his spouse was Ted Hugs. Daddy is a poem written by American confessional poet Sylvia Plath, written on October 12, 1962, four months before the separation from Ted Hugs. It was published Posthumously, posthumously, posthumously in Ariel during 1965. Question number 10. Who wrote the line, My life closed twice before it's closed? Before it's closed. Option A. Sylvia Plath. Option B. Virginia Woolf. Option C. Emily Bronte and option D Emily Dickinson here option D is correct that is Emily Dickinson Emily Elizabeth Dickinson was an American poet she was born on December 10th 1830 
at Amherst, Massachusetts, United States. She died on May 15, 1886 at the age of 55 at Amherst, Massachusetts, United States. Option question number 11. A uh, can't man speak of his own child's lost own child he has lost this is a line from a famous poem by option a sylvia plath option b wallace stevens option c robert frost option d robert lowell here option c is correct that is robert frost Let's see the highlighters. Robert Lee Frost was an American poet. He was born on March 26, 1874 in San Francisco, California, United States. He died on January 29, 1963 at the age of 88 at Boston, Massachusetts in United States. He was a home burial is one of Robert Frost's longest poems, considered one of his most emotionally disturbing ones. Home Burial, published in 1914. It tells the story of a married couple fighting after their baby has died. It's written mostly in dialogue. Question number 12. Robert Frost's poem, Mowing, is a sonnet. An elegy, option B, a villanelle, and option D, a dramatic manner. Here, correct option is option A, that is, a sonnet. Marvin poetry is a sonnet. The sonnet is popular classical form that has compelled poets for centuries. Traditionally, the sonnets is a 14-line poem written in iambic pentameter, employing one of several rhyme schemes and adhering to a tightly structured thematic organization. Question number 13. In which poem do you find these lines? Earth's the right place for love. Option A. Mending wall. Option B. After apple picking. Option C. Birches, option D, mowing. Here, correct option is Birches. Let's see the highlighters. Birches is a poem by American poet Robert Frost. It was included in Frost's third collection of poetry, Mountain Interval, which was published in 1916. It consists of 59 lines. It is one of Robert Frost's most anthologized poems along with other poems that deal with rural rural landscape and wildlife it shows Frost as a nature poet Frost's writing of his poem was inspired by another similar poem Swing on Birch Tree by American poet Lucy Larcom It was written in the year 1913 to 1914, first appeared in Atlantic Monthly in the August issue of 1915. It was later collected in Frost's third book, Mountain Interval, in 1916. Who wrote a poem which, began, which begins, I celebrate myself? Option A. Ralph Waldo Immersion. Option B. Edgar Allan Poe. Option C. Sylvia Plath. And Option D. None of these. Here, let's see the highlight. Uh, here, your answer is none of these. And highlighter says, I celebrate myself. This line occurs in Song of Myself. And Song of Myself is a poem by Walt Whitman. Question number 15. The last completed novel of F. Scott Fitzgerald, Tender in the Night, has its title borrowed from Option A. The Seasons Option B. Dissection and Ode Option C. The Prelude 
Option D, Ode to a Nightingale. Here, Ode to a Nightingale is the correct answer. Tender is the Night is the fourth and final novel completed by American writer F. Scott Fitzgerald. It was first published in Scribner's Magazine between January and April in the year 1934 in four issues. The title is taken from the poem Ode to a Nightingale by John Keats. Ode to a Nightingale was written by the Romantic poet John Keats in the spring of 1819. At 80 lines, it is the longest of Keats' odes. The poem focuses on speaker standing on a dark forest listening to the beguiling and beautiful song of Nightingale Bird. This provokes a deep and meandering meditation by the speaker on time, beauty, death, nature and human suffering, something the speaker would very much like to skip. Ode to Nightingale is a phenomenal poem by Relate Lives that relates life life sufferings to the briefness of bird's song. It was first published in 1819, written by John Keats, a popular romantic poet. The poem explores the wonders of life and death. It comprises the experience of the poet, his miseries and poetic imagination. Its popularity lies in the fact that it represents things related to life, art, literature and nature and seeks a common relationship between among them. Question number 16. Which American writer wrote the famous story Rip Van Winkle? Option A. H. W. Longfellow. Option B. F. Scott Fitzgerald. Option C. Washington Irving. Option D. J. D. Selinger. Here, option C is correct, that is Washington Irving. The correct option is option C, that is Washington Irving. Let's see the highlighters. Washington Irving was an American short story writer, essayist, biographer, historian and diplomat of the 19th century. He is best known for his short stories Rip Van Winkle and The Legend of Sleepy Hollow, both of which appear in his collection The Sketchbook of Geoffrey Crayon Gent. Question number 17. Which of the following works did not win the Booker Prize? Option A. Nadine Godimer's The Conservationist. Option B. Paul Scott's Staying On. Option C. Edith Wharton's The Age of Innocence. And Option D. Margaret at Woods, The Blind Assassin. Here, the work, The Age of Innocence, did not receive any Booker Prize. The Age of Innocence is a 1920 novel by American author Edith Wharton. It was her 12th novel. It was initially serialized in 1920s in four parts in the magazine Pictorial Review. Option A, question number 18. Who is the author of Song of Myself? Option A, Abraham Cowley. Option B, John Don Passos. Option C, Robert Saude. And Option D, Walt Whitman. Here, Song of Myself is written by author Walt Whitman. Highlighter says, Song of Myself, poem of 52 section and some 1300 lines by Walt Whitman, first published untitled in the collection Leaves of Grass in 1855. Walt Whitman was an American poet, essayist and journalist, born on May 31st, 1819, West Hills, New York, United States. He died on March 26, 1892 at the age of 72, Camden, 
New Jersey, United States. Let's move to question number 19. Who said this? That government is best which governs least? Option A. Emotion. Option B. Thoreau. Option C. Thomas Paine. Option D. Rousseau. So it is Thoreau who said the government is best which governs least. Henry David Thoreau was an American naturalist, essayist, poet and philosopher, a leading transcendentalist. He is best known for his work Walden, a reflection upon simple living is natural in natural surroundings and his essay Civil Disobedience, an argument for disobedience to an unjust state. He was born on 12th July 1817 at Concord, Massachusetts, United States. He died on 6th May 1862 at Concord, Massachusetts, United States. Which of the following is not a short story by Edgar Allan Poe? Option A. Black Cat. Option B. Purloined Letter. Option C. The Mesotint. Option D. The Tell Tale Heart. Here your answer is the mezzotint. Let's see the highlighters. The mezzotint is a ghost story by British writer M. R. James. Included in his first collection, Ghost Stories of an Antiquary in the year 1904. Question number 21. Who created the fictional character Natty Bombo? Option A. Herman Mel Melville. Option B. William Faulkner. Option C. Stephen Crane. And Option D. James Cooper. Here, Option D is correct. That is James Cooper. Let's see the highlighters. First appearance, the pioneers. Last appearance was the deer slayer. It was created by James Fenimore Cooper. His full name was... Nathaniel Bompo and his gender was male. Nathaniel Natty Bompo is a fictional character and the protagonist of James Ferrymore Cooper's pentalogy of novels known as the Leather Stocking Tales. Which American playwright debut playwright's debut work is no villain? Option A. Dennis Williams, Option B, Eugene O'Neill, Option C, Harold Pinter, and Option D, Arthur Miller. So here your correct option goes with Option D, that is Arthur Miller. Let's see the highlighters. No Villain is a play by Arthur Miller during his sophomore years of college in 1936 during spring break. Arthur Asher Miller was an American playwright and essayist in the 20th century American theatre. He was born on October 17 in the year 1915. He died on February 10, 2005. Question number 23. Who of the following wrote a novel under the pen name Victoria Lucas? Option A. Doris Lucing. Option B. Ted Hugs. Option C. Sylvia Plath. Option D, Iris Murdoch. Here, option C is correct. That is Sylvia Plath. Sylvia Plath was an American poet, novelist and short story writer. She is credited with advancing the genre of confessional poetry and is best known for two of her published collection, The Colossus and Other Poems and Ariel. She was born on 27th October 1932 at Boston, Massachusetts, U.S. and died on February 11th, 1963 at the age of 30, London, England. Her pen name was Victoria Lucas. He, she married Ted Hugs. Daddy is a poem written by American confession, confessional poet Sylvia Plath, written on October 12th, 1962, four months before her separation from Ted Hugs. It was published 
posthumously in Ariel during 1965. Question number 24. The turn of the screw by Henry James is a ghost story detective comic story here your first option is correct that it is a ghost story the turn of the screw is an 1898 horror novella by henry james first appeared in serial format in collier's weekly magazine in October 1898, it appeared in the Two Magics, a book published by Macmillan in New York City and Hen Mann in London, classified as both gothic fiction and a ghost story. Let's move to question number 25. The Scarlet Letter is set in the Dash Century. Option A, 16th century, Option B, 17th century, Option C, 18th century and Option D, 19th century. Here, a scarlet letter by Nathaniel Hawthorne was written in the 17th century. It was set in the 17th century. The scarlet letter, letter is set in 17th century, Salem, Massachusetts. The novel tells the story of Hester Prine, who conceives a daughter through an affair and then struggles to create a new life of repentance and dignity. Friends, by this we have completed 26th day's MCQs as well. If you have any doubt anywhere, just drop us message in the comment section. We will be waiting for your reply and uh, do let us know whether you are revising it or not. I will come up with some other writer soon. Please be tuned into our channel. Thank you so much.